Are they gaslighting you about the endurance pickup truck? I think they are. I think the potential revenue here is astounding. I just want to start with this footage of the endurance. I want to note to all the hodlers out there and uh, interested parties that we, in my opinion, are being gaslighted about the endurance, about the Lordstown Motors potential TAM, and how starved the fleet market is for vehicles especially BEV vehicles, especially exactly what the endurance is, a BEV pickup, and this is federal, municipal, and commercial fleets. Let me go on here to show that despite this stock price, which I believe is unwarrantedly low, uh, the potential uh, earnings and revenue from this segment of the endurance at full production is billions okay i'm going to prove that with this video this next section here i'm going to go over ford's recent earnings call just a day or two ago and they're reporting and i want you to note i'm going to play a report on it by phil lebeau on cnbc note the fleet income the fleet income fleet sales income Out saved phil lebeau for has those this numbers, quarter phil. John, this is a beat on the top and the bottom line by Ford for the first quarter. The company earning 63 cents a share, well above the street at 41 cents a share. Revenue way above expectations, coming in at just over $39 billion. The street was at just over $36 billion. An adjusted EBIT margin of 8.1% in the first quarter. For a comparison with the first quarter of last year, that's a sizable increase. It was 6.7% last year with free cash flow of $693 million. Remember, this is the first quarter where Ford is breaking out the performance of each division. That's significant, and here's why. We'll go over each of them. The ICE division, which is known as Ford Blue. This is your internal combustion engine vehicles. Huge quarter, $2.6 billion profit on a 10.4% margin. The EV division, the Model E, lost $772 million. And the commercial vehicle division, known as Ford Pro, had a profit of $1.36 billion. For the year, Ford is reaffirming its guidance of planning to earn between 9 and $11 billion. Okay, this is from TechCrunch, and this is just a review on, this is uh, May 2. Q1 earnings rebound as trucks and fleet sales drive profits. Now, I'm just going to read some highlights out of here. Revenue of $45 billion, storming past uh, estimates of $36 building, billion. 20% improvement over the same time last year. Uh, Ford's net income on a gap basis is $1.8 billion compared to a $2 billion net loss in 22. Uh, and that was from a write down for the e business. EBITDA was $6 billion for Pro, which is Ford's fleet division which would represent double 2022 earnings, okay? So that's 100% growth, and that's a $6 billion market segment. Ford Pro reported $13.2 billion, okay, EBITDA, a 28% increase from last year, okay? Uh, that in EBITDA terms, 1.44 billion, which is 3x from 2022. So that's a 300% increase. That growth was driven by both Ford's Transit and E-Transit commercial vans, of which Lordstown Motors has a BEV commercial van, almost re you know ready to go prototype. As well as a 64 increase in 60 percent increase in software subscriptions. This is for fleet management software, which Lordstown Motors also offers. I'm just trying to uh, 13 billion dollar niche. You can go over these numbers and replay this. The point is, this is a breathtaking 
uh, market segment. And I, I want to tell you, you know, how Ford uh, is making this money. And I, I may be repeating myself here, but I'm just going to say it again. They have set up a quota system for fleets. Fleets are starving for vehicles. They are at end of life. Okay, in this next section, I'm going to quote some of my own videos on the insatiable fleet demand. I want to put up some placards here so that you can easily find these on YouTube. And this is a past video I did, and this is describing the state of the fleet market right now in the United States. And it's shocking. It's been for the past two years has found that most OEMs are not soliciting new fleet customers. You remember, that was a pretty chaotic time. I believe it's a positive development that model year 2024 fleet ordering for some major OEMs will once again be based on a pre-approved allocation volume. And some might disagree with me, and, and I understand why. Admittedly, many fleets will not get all of the vehicles they need based on past experience with an allocation system. But it's better than being on the wrong side of an unexpected early closure of a fleet order bank. You might want to replay that. Orders weren't met last year, and they're going to an allocation program this year for the 2024 model. So in a fleet allocation environment, most OEMs require pre-approval to place orders based on an allocation determined by a fleet's past order volumes. And here's an example of an allocation process for government fleets looking to order the all-new 2023 model Ford Super Duty. So the Ford Super Duty will have a short model year with only a limited number of trucks being produced for the 2023 order cycle. So for example, the order banks for government orders for the 2023 Super Duty will open next Monday on November 28, 2022, and they're gonna close on January 13th, 2023. Each government fleet with a Ford FIN number, a fleet identification number, gets an allocation based on their average Super Duty purchases over the past five years. The actual allocation will be approximately 55 to 60% of whatever that average number is. And it's not uncommon for most OEMs to restrict fleet order allocations for their legacy customers. In fact, fleet availability being as tight as it's been for the past two years has found that most OEMs are not soliciting new fleet customers. So when you look at the ordering environment from a historical perspective, the transition to a fleet ordering allocation system has truly been a significant milestone that's never before happened in the history of fleet management. The last time end user demand exceeded production capacity was immediately after the conclusion of World War II. As auto manufacturers stopped port production and switched back to the production of automobiles, end user demand simultaneously spiked. Okay, this is a placard from TechCrunch behind the video audio here. This is what the fleet sales market is right now. World War II level rationing, a cartel system, OEMs not taking on new customers, inflated prices, uh, constricting supplies. This is like OPEC supplying fleet vehicles. This is the market that Lordstown would launch its endurance into wide open transparent pricing unli unlimited production and supply that's what we get with a ramp of the endurance okay i'm just going to close this out with some footage of the endurance my apologies that placard was uh, msnbc or sorry cnbc listen here's the deal the stock price <coughs> of lordstown motors is not representing the opportunity um, we now have uh, a wide open fleet market uh, especially for battery electric vehicles which are mandated by many federal and municipal and even commercial uh, fleets in some states and the endurance is a fleet BEV pickup now, the main competition, really the only competition uh, to the Endurance, 
is the Ford Lightning Pro, which is in limited supply and limited production. I believe their allocation last year was 10,000 vehicles. I don't know if they even made that allocation. So we have a market right now, a fleet market, which the Endurance presently is devoted to, which is operating under wartime rationing conditions. OEMs are not accepting even accepting new customers. If you're a new customer to Ford, if you ha can't get your fleet allocation and you wanna, you were dealing with Chevy, you wanna go to Ford, they're not accepting new customers. So this is a cartel system that the OEMs have worked out for these fleet vehicles. And they are OPEC. They are OPEC. They are gonna decide who gets how much output they're going to decide at what price that output is going to be. There is no choice among the fleet consumers as to which vehicles they are going to get or the number they're going to get. So imagine uh, the endurance uh, goes into production. Um, they are going to be able to provide vehicles to any and all fleet customers okay and they're going to be able to sell at their price because the competition is just is just murdering these fleet companies so and you add to that that under a lease model especially all of these fleet companies are going to get the tax credit or the leasing company that's going to buy the vehicles and lease them to the OEMs. This is a wide open market for the Lordstown Endurance. There is the competition is so hot. I mean, let's put it this way. They're leaving a, 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 a giant hangar door opened into market for someone to come in and supply vehicles it's uh, it, it, there's I mean I, I'm, I'm at a loss for words anyway I do believe that uh, there's a lot of gaslighting going on I think that uh, right now the endurance uh, is commercial it is a finished product ready to be sold uh, the company and uh, Foxconn have received their CFIS approval for the investment. This stock price has been, in my opinion, manipulated down by outside forces. I think uh, there is a good argument for resolving these problems and uh, working towards getting the endurance into full production. I also think that, um, you know, an OEM partner uh, that would be looking for a battery electric pickup truck uh, to come into this market, uh, again, to compete with the cartel-like pricing and output levels of Ford and the Ford Lightning, I think that, um, uh, I think, uh, Again, the stock price does not re represent the opportunities here. And I do think that the opportunities for the endurance, for Lordstown Motors, I do believe place, price, product, quality, it, it, the time is right for this product in this market, especially with this cartel controlling fleet sales. I mean, wow, could there be a better opportunity? Anyway, this is MXUX. I hope you liked the video. I'm not an attorney, financial advisor, or engineer. This is all my opinion. I'm not telling you to buy, sell, or hold any stock. Uh, this is a business case study. Um, please do your own DD. Verify any, any information provided to your own satisfaction. This is MXUX. I hope you liked the video. Good luck in the market.